After completing my 10th class exams in 1979, my father suggested that I go and help my father's uncle and learn astrology. Mathematics being my favorite subject, I learned the calculations. My grandfather taught me how to calculate the inclinations of each planet and how to calculate the Lagna and the Meridian Center MC. And he gave me some birth charts to draw. Thus, I learned how to draw the birth charts first and showed interest in predictions. So, my grandfather uh, told me some predictions, some of the tips that he usually uses for predictions. And after learning those tips, I documented some of them. I verified with my father while my father and my grandfather have uh, laid the foundation for me to show to get interested in astrology uh, for most of for almost a decade or two decades i didn't show any interest welcome to shastri karras astrological series uh, in this presentation i am going to emphasize the importance of the house next to, to the natal position of planet jupiter remember in in bihrugu sarla paddhati uh, there is a rule that states that saturn spoils the house next to its residence in the same way in uttar kalamitra the there is a sloka 19 states that jupiter and saturn uh, the, the these two major planets the the wherever they reside the previous house are, are and the next house they both spoil the previous house and the next house so using that principle um, in this presentation what i am trying to do is to take the jupiter's position in one of the dushtana houses that means bad houses the second sixth eighth and the twelfth houses and see when jupiter is residing in one of these bad houses how will it spoil the next house so i took some examples uh, one few examples with jupiter in the first house so that it's it spoils the second house how it spoils the second house jupiter in the sixth house jupiter in the eighth house so let me go and give explain using these examples this principle This example is for Jupiter in the first house and what you see here is the birth chart of the US President Barack Obama. We all know that in the Barack Obama's birth chart, Jupiter and Saturn, they both are co-joined and they are residing in the first house and Saturn is the lord of the first and second houses. So what you see here is that Jupiter is having a relationship with Saturn is either directly or indirectly so according to this rule jupiter has to spoil one of the bhava of the second house the second house deals with dhanasthanamu and kutumbasthanamu so jupiter has to spoil the either of these two when you go and read the president's uh, autobiography you will understand you will see that during his childhood i think even until he turned 25 or 26 he, he had a number of issues pertaining to dhanasthanamu which is the money and kutumbasthanamu family dynamics so this clearly tells you that whenever jupiter has got afflicted the possibility is very high for that jupiter planet to spoil the next house Let me, let me take another example for Jupiter in the first house. This is the birth chart of the famous Bollywood actress Katrina Kaif. If you look, when you look at the chart, what you see is that Jupiter is again in the first house and Jupiter is the lord of the first house. So, Jupiter as usual at this point is fine. But when you see Saturn, the second house lord, Saturn residing in the 11th house, that means Saturn's third aspect is on Jupiter, thereby making Jupiter get afflicted. 
so jupiter has to somehow uh, spoil the, one of the bhava of the second house as i said earlier the second house is dhanasthanamu and kutumbasthanamu dhanasthanamu we have no idea about it but when it comes to kutumbasthanamu for this netu we all know that uh, the netu is still unmarried that means the netu it is didn't have an opportunity to start a family there are many other reasons for the netu to remain unmarried but this is one of the reason how jupiter uh, has played a role in spoiling the second house which is the kutumbasthanamu remember for women jupiter is the karaka for marriage and when it spoils the kutumbasthanamu one way or the other there will be either a delay in marriage or the native will never get married this is the next three charts are very important because this pertain to the marital life whenever jupiter is in the sixth house remember whenever jupiter is is in the 6th house and it got afflicted the possibility is very high for that need to to get divorced or uh, have a delay in marriages have a delay in marriage now let's go and look at the first example this example uh, the need to got married in february 2006 and at that time transit jupiter Uh, is in february 2006 transit jupiter is in libra spoiled house spoiled by natal jupiter and getting direct as per from natal venus house lord and saturn so when you look at the natal jupiter natal jupiter is, is in the 6th house and it is getting a direct aspect from rahu the another malefic so the jupiter natal jupiter got afflicted in the 6th house that means it has to spoil one of the bhava for the 7th house Seventh house generally states as kalatrasthanamu or marital life. So for this need to have, when he got married, the transit Jupiter is is in the seventh house. See the house that it got spoiled is where the transit Jupiter is there, and transit Saturn is is in the Cancer, which is the fourth house from Rashi Lagna, which is the Chandra, and the second house from the Moon, Chandra Lagna. So at the time of divorce, that is in May two thousand eight. transit jupiter moved to sagittarius which is the ninth house and remember sagittarius is still owned by uh, jupiter only <coughs> and uh, transit saturn is is in the leo which is the fifth house so when you look at it what is the reason for this divorce is that saturn who is in the first house and lord of the 11th house house of desires has co-joined with the seventh house lord venus in the first house and they both are having a direct aspect on the seventh house and jupiter being uh, afflicted with rahu's aspect spoiled the seventh house thus the seventh house got spoiled by saturn and jupiter at the same time and that is one of the reason why when you look at the vimsottari dasa at the time of marriage it was jupiter rahu and the moon and at the time of divorce it was saturn saturn and mars mars is the first house lord remember that's the reason why um, mars first house lord is self that and you can see that the divorce happened during that period this is the chart of an a2 who got married Uh, and who could not get married during the Jupiter Mahadasa? The Jupiter Mahadasa for this native was uh, from 1964 to through 1980. And guess what? He the native got married during the Saturn Mahadasa, that is in, in April 1985. So let's go and look at what is the reason for this Jupiter not helping the native to get married. First of all, you see the Jupiter is in the sixth house, and Jupiter is having a direct aspect with Saturn. so jupiter got afflicted there that's the number one and then the second thing is the seventh house lord is uh, the sixth sixth seventh house lord is mars mars is in the uh, 12 10th house that's okay so mars is in the house owned by moon so what you see here is the most important thing saturn that in the 12th house having a direct aspect with the jupiter in the 6th house resulted in jupiter getting afflicted and spoiling the 
bhava for the seventh house because the seventh house lord is mars and mars has no way has no connection with any of these malefic planets the seventh house lord has given the opportunity for the neto to get married only after that uh, jupiter mahadasa got completed this is another peculiar chart that i had come across uh, the neto got married and within a year they got separated so let's go and look at what happened to this neto the jupiter is in the sixth house so it at the seventh house it has to spoil the seventh house if it if there is any sort of an affliction so what sort of affliction does this jupiter have it when you look at it jupiter is the lord of the seventh house so its own house it has to spoil its own house the only way it, this house got spoiled is by uh, having a malefic in that house which is saturn so when you look at it saturn is residing in the seventh house that means saturn is controlling the seventh house and with jupiter uh, residing in the sixth house and when it spoils the negative seventh house even though it is its own house with the help of saturn a malefic planet the seventh house got highly afflicted that's the reason one of the reason why you see the neto uh, could not uh, continue his marital life and got separated within a year this is another the example of jupiter residing in the sixth house and getting afflicted so when jupiter got afflicted in the sixth house for sure it has to spoil the seventh house so let's go and see who is the seventh house what, which planets are there in the seventh house rahu is it's in the seventh house so there is a dynamic of our spoiling the seventh house a little bit of by the rahu being the catalyst the seventh house has to get spoiled by the jupiter but before we even think about it is jupiter getting afflicted yes when you look at saturn saturn's third aspect is on jupiter so a malefic saturn is looking at is having aspecting the house on where jupiter is residing thus the jupiter got afflicted and so the jupiter in the sixth house uh, spoils the seventh house and in the seventh house what you see is the rahu there and another important thing that i would like to emphasize here is that the seventh house lord venus is co-joined with saturn a malefic natural malefic in the uh, fourth house indicating that there is an instability in the fourth house and the seventh house together so because of this the neto did not provide the date of their mar his marriage or when they applied for divorce but only information that i according to him is that they got married and they were going through the divorce this was during 2006 so you can see the why the neto has going going through the divorce of during 2006 let me go to the third example this is the jupiter in the eighth house jupiter in the eighth house remember eighth house is the bad is dushtana houses one of the dushtana houses or you can say it as a bad house here for this neto jupiter is in the eighth house and jupiter is also the lord of the eighth house that means the eighth house lord is residing in its own house now what we have to do is once you see the jupiter what you have to do is look for is jupiter getting afflicted by any malefic planets <clears throat> when you look at saturn who is in the residing the house owned by jupiter which is the 11th house and saturn's 10th aspect is on the 8th house so saturn residing in the 11th in the house owned by jupiter and its 10th aspect is again on the house owned by jupiter where jupiter is residing that means the eighth house jupiter has to spoil one of the bhava for the ninth house ninth house deals with dharmasthanam and bhagyasthanam bhagyasthanam means earnings dharmasthanam means ethics uh, going dharma and when you go and look at this particular natives uh, life history 
he this Neto is a one of the famous comedian in United States so and money was not at all an issue he was he's rich so the Bhagyasthanamo did not get afflicted so the other alternate that has to get afflicted is the Dharmasthanamo since Dharmasthanamo got afflicted the way you can figure it out that the Dharmasthanamo got afflicted is when you go and look at his uh, life history uh, there are a number of uh, extra marital affairs illegal relationships and 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 few unethical acts pertaining to marital life so when you see all of those about this NATO you can clearly understand that Jupiter residing in the eighth house has spoiled one of the bhava of the ninth house and for this netu it is the dharmasthanamo let me go back and look for another uh, example with jupiter in the eighth house this is my own chart so as i said earlier jupiter residing in the eighth house has to do something spoil one of the bhava of the ninth house which is dharmasthanamo or bhagyasthanamo provided Jupiter gets afflicted. Saturn residing in the sixth house is having the third aspect on the eighth house. So Jupiter got afflicted. Now look at the ninth house. Uh, ninth house got spoiled and since this is my own chart I know that uh, even though I'm working abroad since 1981, 89, I'm still living on a paycheck to paycheck with a minimum, minimum financial security. So this tells me that Jupiter, my in my chart, Jupiter has spoiled the Bhagyasthanamo of the of in the ninth house. Thank you.